Hi. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Tracena of Cat. So we're about to enter into this period which I find very interesting. And yeah, I know, I always say it's really, really interesting, but this one is really pivotal within the calendar. You see, within the Tracena of Cat, we have the day Washakib Bats. And Washakib Bats could be seen as the most holy day of the calendar, the day of creation, the day of this, the day of that. It's a very, very highly celebrated uh, day. The reason for this is, is it's certainly, if nothing else, it's the beginning of the ceremonial cycle of the calendar. The reason why it can be seen as a day of creation is because it's a day of weaving, it's eight bats. This day is a day when we can see the world being created in one way or another. Now, the Tracena of Cat sits in between two very important moments. One is 13 Akhabal. This is the conception day of Washiki Bats. It's the day on which we're making this video right now. It's the day on which this video will be published. 13 Akhabal is the conception from spirit, the conception from the ancestors. It goes through Washiki Bats within the cross of Bats, within the Mayan cross form of astrology. We see 13 Akhabal followed by eight Bats which is like the weaving, the, the gestation, the making of it, followed by three kawok. Now three kawok is going to actually occur during the tracena of Noch. So what we see is these three tracenas, the tracena of bats, within which 13 achabal occurs, the tracena of cat, within which everything comes together, because that's cat bringing things together in a net, and then into the tracena of Noch, where we find three kawok. So what does three kawok have to do? Well, three kawok is the birth process. The number three is the home. So it's the birthing from the home place. And what does it give birth to? Well, the very next day is four achpu. Now, if you remember back to 2012, the beginning of the new Bakhtun occurred on the four achpu day. The four achpu is bringing the divine into the material plane. This is what we find on the stella at Kirigwa, marking the date of the fourth period of time, about 5,000 odd years ago. And this is what we saw in 2012. So Four Achpu is all about the recreation, bringing back the divinity into the physical world. So eight bats sits in the middle of this. And the tracena of cats is the tracena in which eight bats occurs. So this is why I consider it to be particularly pivotal within the calendar. The tracena of bats is about getting it together. The tracena of cats, rather, is about getting it together. It's about bringing things together in your net. It's about gathering stuff, bundling stuff. Everything here is bundled. We buy a corte for the fire. This is in a little bundle when we see the avocados, when we see the oranges, they're all collected in the nets. The fishermen are fishing, collecting in the nets. So it's all about gathering your abundance, it's about gathering things into one place, bringing it all together. So, during the Tracena of Cat, this is what we can do. It's about starting to bring in our harvest, starting to collect. Now, interestingly enough, Cat, is also associated with planting. So we can see we have seven cat, we have one cat, then we have eight cats, so seven cat finishing the harvest, one cat. We can be planting a new harvest, planting something which is to harvest in the future. So we're getting that coming through as well. So cat can also about, be about liberation. It's about moving in to a newly liberated world in order to gather what you really need. It's about sorting out what you've got in your bag, what you're carrying with you, what you really want to carry and what you can let go of. So this is about a new gathering. It's about bringing new stuff in. So we're going to begin on the day one cat, which is literally about this new harvest, this new gathering, this bringing in of the new one cat is about filling your net with new stuff, going out and finding the new things, going out and finding the new harvest. Also about planting something 
which is going to be harvested in the future, perhaps in the next turn, perhaps in the next creation. So it's about setting your sights on what you really want to carry into the next period of creation, because that's what it's all about, this period of creation. We go from one cat, we go into two can. So two often can represent decisions, it can also represent relationships. And can is the energy, it's the wisdom, it's the energy of the serpent, it's our body lightning, the energy that we carry with us. So this could be seen as putting your energy into a relationship or really kind of like seeing choices. Can can also be about the revelation, seeing behind facades, seeing behind illusions. And perhaps Toucan might bring forward that kind of idea in a very black and white way. Toucan's a great day to separate out between reality and illusion, which of course is exactly what you want to do when you're sorting out what you're carrying in your net. You want to sort out exactly what's going to benefit, what's going to bring wisdom, as can will do, what's going to empower, as can will do, and what detracts from wisdom, what detracts from power. Maybe these are things that you're sorting out in your net. So on two can, this is a great day for sorting between those things which empower and those things which disempower. True wisdom and false wisdom, as it were. From two can, we're going to go to three Kame. So, Kame, spiritual transformation. Kame, death, ancestors. But here we see it with the three, and the three representing the inner world, the three representing the home. So, three Kame, what we can understand is that this is a day to look for the transformation within. In fact, we might actually find it kind of difficult if we're trying to find any kind of transformation outside of ourselves. The three is very much about bringing it in, about focusing on what's going on within us. How can we transform within? Because if we want to transform outside, we've got to transform within first. So once again, working out what you're going to carry in this new net, what you're going to carry in this new bundle, this new gathering, that's already within you, you're going to take forward in order to transform. From three Kame, we're then going to go into four Kech. So, four Kech. We have a number and an awal that actually work very well together because Kech can very often represent the animal kingdom. It represents the natural world and it represents nature. And of course, when we talk about the animal kingdom, we're often thinking about the f what we would call the four-legged ones. And so four Kech, is very, very solid. Kech is strength. Kech is dependability. It's the strength that we get from nature, and the messages that we get from nature. It's also the messages that we get from the animals around us, from the natural world. And here we see it combined with the number four. So that number four is really about having four feet on the ground, being really well grounded, really well planted. Four representing the material plane and Kech representing the natural world. So this is very much a day to be in the natural world, to recognize yourself as a part of material nature, as well as a part of spirit. It's a great day. If you're in need of some grounding, for Kech is the day to go and have a walk in the woods and go and get grounded. Go and go up the mountain and go and see what messages are there for you, what you can bring into your new net, what you can ground into your new net. From four Kech, we're going to go into five Anil. And so once again, we see Anil, the yellowing, the maturing, bringing things to ripeness. So Kat, yes, the harvest, Kat also the planting, Anil casting the yellow light over things, bringing things to ripeness, bringing in the joy. And here we have it with the number five. So the number five is this, it's the hand, it's the work. So five Anil, is about putting your work into what you want to ripen. Once again, maybe if we're, we're looking with cat, with that discernment of what we want to carry forward and what we want to leave behind, what's burdening us and what's helping us? Well, five Anil is saying, let's put some effort into bringing to ripeness the projects and ideas and plans that are actually going to benefit us, 
Because sometimes we might be putting our energy somewhere else, we might be distracted. Our work may be taking us somewhere else. Five Manil gives us an opportunity to focus our energy on what's going to truly bring prosperity into our family, into our community. What we really want to ripen. From five Anil, we go into six Toch. So Toch is service, Toch is payment, Toch is looking after the people around us. Toch is often about serving our community. And here we have it with the number six. So the number six is this number which represents physical stability. It also represents the family. Six Toch is a great day to be looking after your family. A great day to be using some of your energy to pay back for the stability that you've received from your family. So if you have the opportunity to do something to help a member of your family out, that helps to stabilize your family, six toch is a great day to do it. Toch is also the Noel of the fire, the sacred fire, where we pay back for what we've received. So what we can understand is that toch being payment, payment of debts, whether they're energetic or physical, will if we make a payment on six toch, this can be a great day to bring stability to our family, stability to ourselves through the paying off of that debt, through the resolution of any energetic debt that we're holding. From six toch, we're going to go into seven z. So seven z, the day before eight bats. Seven z, the very last day of the ceremonial cycle. And z we see as the guide. Z we see as faith, as loyalty. And in one way or another, I see Z as this guide on our road, our path. And here we see it with the seven right at the top of the pyramid, the balance point, the pinnacle. It's the guide. We can imagine the guide being maybe a spiritual guide or our faithful dog, whichever that we, we choose, having taken us, guided us to the top of the mountain to the pinnacle, from where we see all of our choices laid out behind us, before us. We also see it as the end of the guidance, because once the guide has taken us to the top of the mountain, once the guide has taken us to the initiation day of Washiki Bats, then the guide's journey is over, then the guide's journey is done. So this is about our guidance taking us to the pinnacle, to the end of something, the end of a particular period of guidance before we begin something new. It can also be a point where we're on the top of the mountain, we're looking out in front of us, and we're seeing all of our options. Where do we want to be guided to next? It's also a day of faith and loyalty. It might show you, 7C might show you all the things where you've put your faith all the people that put their faith in you. From 70, of course, we now go into Washiki Bats. Washiki Bats is a great day of celebration when all around Guatemala, the day keepers, the Akikab, will be making their fires to celebrate this day. Even if they don't make any other fires, they're likely to make a fire on Washiki Bats. So Washiki Bats, this day of creation, this day of weaving, Bats, the weaver, the creator, the artistic genius. This is about weaving things together, about creation. In some ways it's about gestation. And they also consider that the eight is about gestation as well. So this is really this whole day of creating a weaving, creating a new fabric, gestating it, putting the work into weaving it. And with the eight, it's all about wholeness. It's about bringing it together, the grandfathers and the grandmothers all coming together. I also see the eight as being this crossing point because we have the one and the seven coming together in the eight. So one being the birth of something new, seven being the death of something old. The sequence goes seven bats, one bats, eight bats. So it's the old weaving and the new weaving coming together in the eight. This is the passing of the torch between the master and the student, between those who initiate and those who are being initiated. So this is why eight bats is so important. It's the passing of the ability to weave, the ability to create, 
the ability to understand between one generation and the next. And on 8 Bats, this is when we celebrate that. So 8 Bats is a great day for passing on creation, for creating and celebrating the creative abilities that you have. From 8 Bats, we're then going to go into 9 Er. So Er is the Nawal of the path, it's the Nawal of the road, it's the Nawal of the journey, both our physical journey and our spiritual journey. But on 9 Er, we're celebrating the path of life because we have the 9 representing life and the Divine Feminine. So this is all about our life path. Isn't it interesting how we've got to the top of the mountain, we've been initiated and now we set off on our life path. So this is a great thing to be looking for on the day 9 Er. It's a great day to keep your senses open, keep your awareness open for what your life path might be, where your life path might take you. It's also maybe a great day to be asking or looking to the women in your life to help you to understand what your life path might be. Because it's a day of femininity. It's a day when the women's energy is particularly enhanced. From 9 Ech, we then go into 10 Ach. So Ach, the harmony in the home, the harmony in the community. And 10 Ach, again, like in the 4 Kech, where we see a number and a Nawal kind of like doubling up on the energy. With 10 Ach, we see something particularly beautiful as well. Because we have Ach, that baston, that staff of authority, but that staff of authority that brings harmony to the community and harmony to the home, we see that coupled with this, with the ten, which is all about society and agreement and helpfulness. We see all of these things together. So ten ach is really a day of community. It's a day of helping out. It's a day of creating agreement. That agreement bringing harmony into our society, into our home and into our community. So Tenach is a great day to get together with other people within your family, within your community, in order to really make those agreements, to help each other out, to join hands within community. From Tenach, we're then going to go into 11 Ish. So Ish, here I am before Shepotrel. And Shepotrel is a place of altars. It's a sacred mountain. Ish represents those sacred places. It represents our connection to Mother Earth. And on 11 Ish, well 11 can be a bit all over the place. 11 might be slightly distracting, might take us in many different directions, but it might be going in many different directions to find our connection with Mother Earth. It's in places like this, in the sacred places, that we can make our offerings and ask Mother Earth for what we're looking for. And so 11 Ish is a great day to go around and have a look for your connection to Mother Earth, which you might find in many and varied locations. From 11 Ish, we're going to go into 12 Tikin. So Tikin is the Nawal of prosperity. Tikin is the Nawal of vision. The number 12 represents bringing together of life's experiences, bundling them into one place. And so what we can see is that 12 Tzikin could very well represent the bringing together of your life's experience into a vision, into an idea, into something which you can then take forward. So 12 Tzikin, as we're going through this tracena of bundling, as we're, tra as we're gathering in the cat tracena, 12 Tzikin is saying about gathering together your life's experience in order to get your vision, in order to understand how to bring things forward in prosperity and sustainability for all. And then from 12 Tzikin, we finally end with 13 Achmach. Achmach being forgiveness, Achmach being pardon, but Achmach also recognizing the sweetness of the human heart. And here we have it connected with the ancestors. Here we have it connected with the spirit world. So this is receiving and giving forgiveness from the ancestors and for the ancestors. It's recognizing how we can be human and how 
as humans, we can still bring the ancestors and the spirit of the ancestors into this world. 13 Achmach, the ultimate day of forgiveness, the asking of forgiveness from our ancestors, from spirit, but also recognizing the perfection of the human heart through that process of forgiveness. So this has been the Tresenna of Cat. I hope that it's given you the guidance that you may be seeking and I look forward to making another video in 13 days time. Thank you.